Demetrius, how are you today? I'm good. How about yourself, man? Doing great. Uh, you've been doing the rounds like we were talking about off air, uh, doing some interviews already. And I bet you haven't been asked this question yet, but uh, what happened to the Seattle Seahawks on Monday? I'm a fellow Seahawks fan. That was a pretty bad loss. Hey, you can't win them all, baby. You can't win them all. You can't go out there and perform like that every single time. So, I mean, go out there and perform like studs. They are still studs, but, you know, it, it happens. It's part of the, it's, it's part of the game. Do you think they were outcoached? That was my take. I think Pete Carroll, you know what? I know there's a lot of loyalty there, but I feel like he's being outcoached a little bit. I don't know. What do you think? No, I don't think so. Like, things happen, man. It's a football game. They might they had an off day, right? You know, they might show it up and they're probably playing football that day, which is, it could be damn well, you know, the reason why they lost or played like that. Uh, we'll see. They're, they're going to bounce back this week. I know they will. Absolutely. I like the optimism. That's good. Uh, before we get into your fight, obviously, we got the big flyweight title fight coming up here in the UFC. Do you still watch the UFC? I know you've made it pretty clear you're staying in one championship for the rest of your career, but will you be tuning into that fight on Saturday? Mm. Will I be tuning into that fight on Saturday? Probably not because I'm going to a friend's house and they don't watch UFC. They only watch when I fight. So that we know, but I will catch the replay of it. I will see who wins, obviously. Then I'll go back and watch to see how the fight uh, went down. Okay, and right now, I'm sure you've seen it, Davis and Figueroa, about a 3-1 to one favorite on the betting lines. Do you feel like that's accurate? Do you feel like he is you know, decisively going to win this fight? What's sort of your thoughts on the matchup? I think it's going to be a tough fight. I mean, they're both great athletes. Obviously, uh, Figueroa is uh, a powerhouse. He can grapple. He can, he can strike. He's got a lot of power. And then, you know, Brandon, he is very tricky, very crafty, um, a lot of experience so, and young. So it's going to be a great fight for both those guys. Certainly is. Yeah, we'll sort of see how it unfolds. It looks like Cody Garbrandt's going to be next for them. Do you like that, even though he doesn't have a win in the weight class? If you were champ, then would you accept? Would you be cool with adding a little bit more name value to the division? Or are you one of these guys that's like, you know what, let's get the contenders moving through that are already in the weight class? You know, when I when I sit there and I look back, I don't really know who the next contender would be, you know, like who's yeah. been putting in a lot of work. I don't know who's on a four-fight, five-fight win streak. So back in my day, when I was a champion, you actually had legit contenders who were fighting often. You had like Wilson Hayes, you had Chris Carrasso, Kuro Gucci, John Dotson, you know, John Margo. Those guys put together three, four, three or four, five win streaks before they got a title shot. So today's market, you know, I don't think you see that anymore. You just, you don't. Like I, if, if you would ask right now, who's the number two, you know, flyweight contender in the world in, in the UFC ranking, I'm like, I don't know. Oh fucking no! I don't know. I know it's yeah. Figueroa and ben, Jonas, Jonas Benavides. I think for me, I got released. Yes, he did. Yeah, for me, he did. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know who's. I don't know who's rent too. You know, Brandon Moreno. He's he's won that fight, so it's not like it was back in when I was fighting. I felt like you had a lot. You know, I felt like you had a lot, a lot of bigger names and a lot more uh, veterans in that division. Well, don't you think part of that, too, is the, kind of when, you know, when you left and obviously Cejudo kind of vacated the title, um, you know, it seemed like there, we, they, weren't, they weren't really sure what was going on with, with the division. Do you feel like that's part of it, where the UFC never really sort of got the division moving? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you just mentioned him Cejudo, and I totally forgot that he fights that fight, but he's retired, so that's why I didn't mention him. Um, yeah, you know, I, honestly, I'm not too sure. You know, I, I, like when it comes to fighting and, and what, you know, the UFC or what do these guys try to do marketing and stuff? I really don't pay attention to it. You know, like if an athlete's fighting and I think he's good, you know, if I have time, I'll tune in or I'll, I'll basically look at the, you know, the replay or the guy that I really enjoy watch fighting, watching him fight, or I'm a fan of him, Then I'll, I'll, I'll try to find a way to tune in. Okay. Who would that be right now? If you were to name a fighter that you never miss their fight in the UFC. Oh my God. I mean, we'd be here all day. I mean, just give me, give me one name. Who's someone that comes to mind when I say that? Yeah, I would say uh, Tyron Woodley, Izzy Adesana, um, you know, one championship, John Haggard, uh, you know, Rod Tang, I mean, you know, Giorgio Petrosian. Bibiana Fernandez. Just, I mean, I, Bibiana Fernandez, that's definitely another one. I mean, so many of these names are coming through my head like a bigger rush of mountain, you know, uh, of of water where I'm just like uh, yeah this guy okay. this guy this guy this, 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 so many guys no for sure and just you mentioned Zahudo there gotta ask do you think he comes back or do you think he's done he, he's gonna stay retired it all depends it all depends if he gets the right number he's looking for so um, we'll, we'll have to see it's been a challenging year for everyone, obviously with COVID and everything going on, but you haven't fought. I think this is the first time in your career you haven't fought in an entire year. I could be wrong on that, but how, how challenging has that been just not having a fight? Not to your, not to anyone's fault. We got this pandemic going on. 
Yeah, uh, you're right. It's been a full year. At the end of the day, it's nothing I can do, right? All I can do is is basically look at it as a positive a positive attitude and an opportunity to spend more time with my kids and my wife and help them with their schooling and help them around the house and help the wife with schooling. So I've been blessed to be able to just be here and, and be healthy during this off time and just hang out with the kids and wife and, you know, and just see what the world does. Making the most of it, as they say. So all the kids are at home doing homeschooling then, I guess, or is it all virtual? How is it working? It's all virtual homeschool. So they basically the teacher give us the curriculum and then we have basically have to teach the curriculum to the children. How's, and they have how's that students. been though? Like I know you teach, you know, martial arts and stuff, but to actually like, you know, educate your kids. How's that going for you? I am a black and white type of person. So stool, S-T-O-O-L is also spelled like I'm sitting on this stool, but the way you, I mean, it's spelled exactly the same. Yeah. It's spelled exactly the same, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So, but for the kids, it's like, but it's two different things. It means two different things. Stool means poop. Stool means you, something you sit on, right? Yeah. So, like, explaining them all that stuff is, like, literally, like, just a whole bunch of stuff. And then, you know, teaching the continents. And another day, we're uh, taught Maverick, no, tired about uh, uh, water gauge, a weather vane, an anometer, like, just shit that they don't really need to know, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. why don't you know how fast the wind's blowing? <laughs> Right. That's no, what, for that's, sure. That, that's what the meteorologist does on the internet. That's what he gets paid to do, not me. So just learning all this stuff and teaching it to him, you know, it, it, it's fun. What about uh, training? Has that been pretty restrictive with some of the closures? Like, I don't live that far away from you. I live out in Vancouver and like, we're still allowed to go to the gym, but we have to wear a mask. How, how are things with you out in uh, Seattle? Our gym are shut down, so I can't go to YMCA and lift weights. Uh, and you know we're, we're kind of restricted on you know what we can do in small groups. And but we're navigating through it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we we saw this coming. Obviously, we'd love to have all the gyms open and have classes packed at you know maximum capacity to get some great sparring in. But it is what it is. What can we do? Are you and uh, Bibiana Fernandez still touching base and still keeping in touch? Yeah, we just talked yesterday. We talked for like forty five minutes. Nice. Which is easy to do with him. He's a talker. I love Bibiana, right? Always he's, a he's talker. He's, he's talker. He's always transparent. And I love the guy. We had some good conversations, man. He always puts you in a good mood, right? The guy's never negative. Yeah, never negative. Negative. Never negative. Good, good guy to have around for sure. Um, you talked about in your interview with Ariel this morning how you'll never return to 125, and it's understandable. I know this is someone who's getting older myself. The metabolism slows down a little bit, right? But uh, is there any part of you that wished that you would have went to 35 a little bit earlier in your, your career, just just seeing how much better you feel up there? No, not at all. I mean, obviously, me cutting 125, it's just I don't want to put my body through the stress and like the deficit. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. want to put my body through that. Like It's not natural. I don't care what anybody says. It's not natural for an athlete who works out. I mean, I feel it's not natural. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of dietitians like, no, you can get down there, but you can get down there healthy and, and it's totally fine. You can do it. But for me, like when I start eating, when I start eating and I start lifting weights, like I will try to put on size. But, you know, once I start working out and I start doing my two days, I mean, healthy and clean, you know, I'll walk around 138. Now, for me to get down to 125, I had to drink two gallons of water every day and I had to boil myself in a hot tub. Like I had to go through a lot to get down there. So it wasn't natural, right? Like that's not a natural thing to do to make that weight class. And I was dehydrated when I made it, when I made the weight class. So for me, I was like, I'm done with that. Like I'm 34 years old. I've done, I've done amazing things in my division. Now it's time to take care of my body, enjoy my last, my, my last like four to five years and not worry about, Cutting all the way down to 125. Well, I know you don't like you have this fight booked in February, but it must be nice that you don't even have to really think about that when you're training. Like now, you can just sort of focus more on the fight as a because you know the weight cut is a process, like you said. You can make the weight, but it's still something you gotta be conscious of and be like, okay, gotta do the bath and all that stuff, right? Like, have you noticed a difference? Yeah, absolutely. I, I noticed that. Uh, you know, at first I noticed it, it felt great, but then I noticed a huge difference when I cut when I fought at 135 and then I also fought in my own time zone that was the best I ever felt when I fought in one championship I felt amazing like fighting in my own time zone over there even though it was like 10 a.m. over there but fighting over here at like 6 o'clock 7 o'clock that's when I felt the best okay that's great um, you've known about Marais for a while obviously because you guys were supposed to fight earlier this year looking at that fight from a style perspective how do you feel like you match up against him I think I match up pretty well I mean he's all obviously a grappler a tall long rangy 
Um, you, know, you know me, short, compact, fast, great for work, great. You know, I can fight everywhere. I feel like he can fight everywhere too. Um, I think it's gonna be a great fight. Okay. And uh, is there any past opponent that reminds you of him in terms of the maybe you know him physically or the style matchup? Anything sort of reminds you of him in your preparation? <laughs> Uh, physically, you know, just the, the long, lanky, you know, uh, Miguel Torres, I'm the Cruz, um, uh, but all those guys have, you know, different thing, you know, um, uh, Donald Cruz had the footwork and he was able to, he had great wrestling, mixed it up very well. Um, I think the biggest thing for him that he brings that I probably have never faced before is a great grappler. You know, I fought Wilson Hayes, but he wasn't a, a, a phenom grappler like him, but I feel like his grappling is the best, but you know. Me training Bibiano, you know, we talked about it, and he was like, "You're my brother. You're ready for grappling. You, you know, I've been grappling with you a long, long, long time. Yeah. And before, before I first met you, I'll be very worried. But you know, it's a fight. It's a fight. But you're grappling good now." <laughs> You do a great impression of him. That's really good. So I, uh, I guess being around him enough, uh, it cer- certainly will do that. that. That's awesome. So that kind of gets to our next question. Like you talked about things being closed down and stuff. As it stands now, like what is your camp looking like for this fight? I know it's February, but I'm sure you're still, you know, sort of strategizing and sort of putting putting the work in. Yeah, just putting the work in. Like you said, um, yesterday we had we did an hour in the pool. Uh, and then Monday we had some good uh, light round sparring. Then we did some pad work and we did some drill on the feet today. We did some uh, wrestling, we did some balance work, and then we did some uh, hard rounds of grappling. And tomorrow we'll go back in, we're going to do some more ra- rounds on the uh, stand-up, we're going to do some drilling. So it's, it's good. Like, my training's always been very intimate, you know, with my teammates. You know, we don't come from a big, giant gym, you know, like, like you know, American Top Team or uh, School of Hard Knocks or, you know, all the – or Team Alpha. It's always been a very small, collective group of guys. And it, it's going great, you know. I mean, the biggest thing that we're missing right now is just having the weight room and other things open and having a big, big core group where it's like usually it's bought by eight, maybe 12 of us. Now it's cut down to maybe four of us. How's the fight playing out on the 24th? I know we're miles away there, but how do you envision the fight playing out? I always envision my fights going to be uh, battles. I mean, I always tell myself it's going to be a long night. You never know what's going to go, going to happen. I'm going to go out there. I got to be sharp. I got to be focused. I got to, you know, be just got to be mighty. Joel Romero and Anderson Silva are free agents. Where do you think they'll end up? One championship, apparently not interested, so I think their options are kind of limited. Yeah, I mean, PFL or bare-knuckle fighting, uh, boxing. I mean, the sky is the limit. There's so much, there's so much, there's so many organizations out there where a person can go out there and make a living. For sure. And what do you think of the UFC cut? 60 right now, they're going to have right before the holidays. Not exactly good timing. Hey, they got to do what they got to do. It's business, right? They're going to replace some of the contender series contracts. Uh, most important question in this interview is that as a Canadian here, I have to ask this. When this COVID thing hopefully sort of lifts a little bit, will you be going to check out the Seattle crack and the new hockey team? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, the honesty though. Have you, have you seen the logo and all this stuff? I don't necessarily like the name, but I thought the logo was kind of cool. I think I, I haven't seen, I think I've seen a logo, logo, but I actually love it. I love the name. I love the crack and I love the mythology behind it. So I love that name. Do you know? And then, of course, you know, they got a, the sponsorship from the alcohol, the Kraken, which I thought was very good. Oh, that's dope. That's cool because the guys Kraken on there bringing out a boat, I believe, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Demetrius, thanks so much for the time. Always a pleasure. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. If you got anything to plug, I'll give you the last word. Yeah. Make sure I share the fight. Demetrius Johnson is taking on Adrian Marias for the Flyweight World uh, Championship belt on February 24th. Probably going to be live on Turner or TNT. I'm not sure. Check your local listing. Also, you can find me on Twitch, Mighty Mouse, Mighty Gaming, on Twitter, Mighty Mouse, and then on Instagram, Mighty.